Hey guys, I'm Andre. I'm Hilton. I'm Tristan. And this is ATV. We're gonna be reacting to Scooter's Death New Death Battle. Another uh, one. Spiral versus Crash Bandicoot. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, Which are kind of late on again. Just, just a like... bit. This time. <laughs> just a little. Just a little. Just we did. <laughs> but uh, honestly, I played more Crash than Spiral, but just because. I had it, the Game Boy Advance version because I never grew up with like a PlayStation. Yeah, I mean, I, we've never, we've only ever played both of the games at our friend mm. for a couple of hours only, so mm -hmm. we never even got to play the full games. I've seen both of them, like the full, like the first three from both. I've seen the whole game, like each of them. I played so, Spyro for Game Boy Advance. Good days. <laughs> mm. So I we know I know almost everything about both of them. Not everything, like it's probably details I don't know about. I know the mat the mass majority I guess of it. But and honestly, I would think Spyro is gonna beat Crash. I don't really see how Crash would be a dragon. Unless he's invincible. The mm -hmm. Aku Aku mask. That they're probably gonna put it they're definitely gonna put that up. They're probably gonna no. put it maybe for like Thing. I doubt they're gonna use it as a crashing force with him to be like actually beat Spyro with it. But I don't know. It's, it's just Spyro versus, especially in the first game, he versus other dragons yeah. that are bigger yeah. and stronger than him. So it's just like I don't know. Kind of like eh. I I, don't know, I kind of just want to see what they're both gonna have. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. How are you gonna explain it? But so we'll probably start this. Discussing it after we watch the video. So, yep, let's get into it. Oh, jeez, that's like. Why is it such a pain? <laughs> I know, right? The early oh, 1990s played host to one of the biggest Say, battlegrounds the world had ever yeah. seen well, the well, console now. war. Nintendo and Sega's mascots were left in a merciless duel over the gaming throne. But when the smoke cleared, a surprise third challenger was rising to the top. The Sony PlayStation. And it didn't have just one mascot, it had two. Crash Bandicoot, the mutated marsupial from Down Under. And Spyro the Dragon, the powerful purple hero of the Dragon Realm. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Mm. Both of them got re are getting. Re well, listen, I, was getting I a admire like another brilliant doctor yeah. of science Mostly as much as the next guy, especially yeah, those with gonna... grand plans to take over the world. Oh my gosh, I know that show. But I'm not sure Doctor Neo Cortex <laughs> makes the cut. Why not? He's an evil genius who made a mutant Aussie army of animals to take over the world. Sure, but when it came time to assign a general for this army, Cortex chose, of all things, a bandicoot. A band of what? You're making that up. It's a real animal. Look. Oh, hey, it's kind of cute. How's Crash. that little thing gonna take over the, the world? With the Evolvo Ray, Cortex did successfully mutate it into a powerful beast. However, when he tried to brainwash the creature, he utterly failed to create his fearsome general. Instead, he got Crash Bandicoot. So Cortex threw him out like trash, and Crash became his worst nemesis ever. Which is super embarrassing, cause this band of Crash is a few snags short of a Barbie. But his physical abilities make up for it. He's got parkour skills like nobody's business. Which is appropriate, as bandicoots are excellent jumpers, similar to their marsupial cousin, the kangaroo. He's got superhuman strength, and can take a big hit and just keep on going, like an energizer bunny of pain. Crash can double jump in midair, slide incredible distances, and use Crash Dash to boost his speed. He's also tapped into Damn. Mojo, what the? a magic substance that's basically life energy to enhance his What is that? I think that's He's got his Norris YouTube Roundhouse and Triple Dragon, YouTube but his favorite move is the Cyclone Spin. He can even give know. this move a boost a tornado, the Death yeah. Tornado technique, though this can leave him dizzy and prone to counterattacks. Still, these brutal moves proved incredibly useful for you rescuing know, his fellow mutant mind. bandicoot so girlfriend, <laughs> Tom. <laughs> oh, why does she look like that? She's like, really yeah. hot, but also not at the same time? I'm really confused, girl. Uh -huh. <laughs> While Crash's natural abilities Crash were enough to one, save her, his future battles one. with Cortex <laughs> would require more sophisticated tools. <laughs> yeah, like the rad copter pack. He's even got himself the unicorn of motorsports, the space motorcycle. What I wouldn't give for one of those. 
To increase his firepower, he carries a special bazooka that uses a naturally occurring and easily attainable form of ammunition, Wamba Fruit. The same kind of fruit Wamba. shooter that's on his Wamba. power Wamba. Wamba suit from Alien. Er, <laughs> I mean, this completely generic looking mech. But why fruit? I can't imagine it's a particularly effective projectile. I don't know, Wiz. Remember that time I shot you with my potato gun? Ah, uh, you were stuck in a coma for like a month. Wait, what? You told me I lost that month because my time travel wristwatch finally worked. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, where's Crash getting all this cool tech? He can't be building it all himself. He's pretty dumb. They're all thanks to his kid sister, Coco, who's ten times the inventor Cortex is. But Crash isn't really dumb. He just lacks communication skills. He actually shows many symptoms of autism. Some people with autism, <laughs> known as savants, are extraordinarily gifted in particular skill sets, and I think that describes Crash perfectly. While he may not know how to hold a conversation, he is a superb athlete and puzzle solver. Well, I'm sure it helps that he's surrounded by friends who encourage his better way. traits. He doesn't give no Fs, everyone. Mm. Hey, that was a good one! <laughs> Like Dr. Wacko, his magical mask buster uh, dad, who's basically a god. Lucky bastard. Aku Aku's magical mojo prowess is quite impressive. He's very protective of Crash and will often step in when Crash is in trouble. But not always. Wiz, why can he teleport across dimensions on his own, but can't teleport Crash very far at all? This is as far as I can take us. We'll have to fight our way to the robot's Crash interior like and save your like sister. Isn't that the same well, voice actor that plays Grim? Fatherly okay. intuition is kicking in, encouraging Crash to learn from his own mistakes Crash and become like his own man. Like he can't wait to mess everything Yeah, maybe he's yeah. just being a dick. <laughs> well, thanks to Aku Aku and his own amazing abilities, Crash has performed some incredible feats while stopping oh, Cortex's like plans time Jack and time again. He's strong enough to lift his adopted brother Crunch over his head. Since Crunch is at least twice as big as Crash, that would mean Crash's strength is similar to the world's best power lifters. His cyclone attack can generate enough force to lift this large boulder and throw it so hard it shatters on impact. Comparing its size to Crash, that boulder must weigh nearly 8 tons. He's also fast enough to outrun polar bears, which can move up to 25 miles per hour. Yeah, but Crash really shines when it version. comes to durability. Just look at how well he holds up after taking 100 and Oh my god. Are they gonna put, you're gonna put that in? He's like dead. Yeah, he's gonna get huh. uh. Where did they all come from? I bet it's <laughs> Aku Aku's fault. And he's right back up like it didn't even happen. What a champ. Crash We're gonna has put that in the logic. Of 20 yeah, I guess so. Of TNT <laughs> all at once which, given their size, could potentially level a city block. And with the help of Aku Aku, he even survived a crash landing from outer space. What the heck is up with his hair? This vessel was likely falling at 17,500 miles per hour, similar to so the space shuttle's typical re-entry, which this? means the force of its yeah, collision it might be equivalent to more than 2 million tons of TNT. Wait, but why didn't Aku Aku just teleport them to safety? I can't believe we're okay. Oh, are you kidding me, Aku? You know what you did, or didn't do. But what's the saying? Any crash you can walk away from, right? Plus, given how easy it is for Crash's enemies to lure him into traps, his absurd durability is crucial. Well, Crash isn't Jeez. perfect, but with his amazing abilities yeah, and a mojo, he's saved the whole world it's many times over. And after years of this, he even finally learned how to speak. Now let's go home and eat pancakes! Pancakes! Oh, you're done Wait, now. that's it? <laughs> oh. Prophecy tells of a well, special purple so dragon different. born every ten and generations, destined really to be a hero of like... his age. This was the legend stop. of Spider. Yeah, yeah. But when the ancient dark master Malifor learned of this, he swore to destroy Spyro before he even hatched. By the way, there are at least oh three my different gosh. timelines for Spyro, but we're mainly sticking with the no, Legend of Spyro one. version. Because he can do pretty much the anything the other one. ones can, and more. Plus, I think they're all the same as Spyro reincarnated anyway, since that's what the prophecy says, and look, that's totally Skylands being made at the end of Dawn of the Dragon. <clears throat> Wild fan theories aside, Spyro was saved that's from the only thing I know from Crash of the three Crash games after Spyro and Dragon. He decided all to this other pull stuff Moses and send Spyro's egg floating down a river to who that's knows the where. Legendary okay, why do so many stories start with people just throwing babies into rivers? That's never a good idea. 
Wrong, Wiz. It worked out fine for Spyro. He was found and adopted by a family of dragonflies. And even without fellow dragons around, Spyro grew up to be a pretty good fighter. He's strong, tough, and makes good use of elements. his horns, tail, and claws. Elements? But Fire, not his wings. Ice. Not yet. Without a dragon's like parent, Spyro remained mostly grounded during his childhood. But he got pretty good at using his well, head. Yeah, he's really like fast. the fun way, not not the brainy stuff. You do not want to be on the other end of his charge attack. But one fateful day, everything changed. During a game of hide and seek with his quote unquote brother, Sparks, they got into a bit of monkey business and, in desperation, Spyro unexpectedly breathed fire. This was Spyro's first hint that he was <gasps> adopted. Hold up, you mean he <laughs> thought he was an actual dragonfly the whole time? I can think of a few other hints like, I don't know, any time he saw his reflection. This revelation prompted dragon, Spyro to man. go on a journey in search of his true home what? among other dragons. Oh, and Sparks tagged along to help find treasure and protect his dragon brother from harm. Not like he needed it! He's the chosen one, bitch! He's got a bunch of <laughs> awesome dragon powers! Fire, As ice, a purple dragon, Spyro is earth? not limited to just his fire breath. After finding and rescuing four great dragon guardians, they each became his teachers in the arts of elemental combat. Ignitus taught Spyro how to control fire and focus it into huge blasts. Voltaire showed him how to use electric breath to stun enemies and toss them through the air. Cyril taught him to freeze foes solid and fire ice shards. And Parador showed him how to use earth breath to split rocks and roll up into a ball. Dude, Spyro also learned his physical and chief combat with well, the martial art of twice. Dragon Con. Oh, and he finally learned how to fly. About time. Speaking of which, like Spyro part. learned how to briefly slow down time to improve his reactions. What? Oh, damn! But all of this led to Spyro learning the ultimate element. The convexity breath. Ether. Convexity. It's ether. No, stupid. Everyone calls it convexity. Oh, okay. Purple dragons like Spyro can use a mysterious energy that is essentially the spiritual life force of the universe. While it's never officially ether. named in canon, the lead ether, concept artist Jared dragon. Poland has gone on record to clarify its name and properties. And he calls it ether. Eat that boomstick. Don't convex me, Wiz. True fans know I'm right. Ether is an extremely why, powerful why element which convexity? binds the fates of the living and the dead. With Ether, Spyro pulls that. from the four elements I'm to create energy, which, after a while, has Wait, power comparable to that of an Smasher. atom smasher. Yo, Isn't that what? the thing what? that shoots an atom around at light speed for all sorts of I'm voting for Spyro. Yes, <laughs> I'm gonna vote for containing <laughs> mega joules of energy. You don't have, it doesn't have to be like a. Uh, this beam can, can slice through, through a human skull in a nanosecond. Right, just, just like what happened to Russian scientist Anatoly Pogorsky when he stuck his head in one of them. Why the hell would he do that? God, being Russian must be hard. Bugorsky took a beam less than a molecule thick through the skull, which obliterated all matter in its path in an instant. While he survived, half of his face around the microscopic hole in his head swelled, peeled apart, and was permanently paralyzed, while he experienced the blinding light he described as brighter than a thousand suns. Hey, Spiral, what was that What people about? do for signs? I don't really know. I just felt like I had to hit it. And when I did, the power of a thousand suns surged through my body. Just imagine if that beam was the size of Spyro's super breath. No, wait, you don't need to. We've seen what it's like when he killed the oh, Ape King. Yo. Of course, Spyro's ether powers have other uses as well, such as curing his fellow dragon Cinder of Malforce corruption. Is he shooting ghosts at her? What kind of magic were they smoking when they came up with that? Ghost. But ether is go. dependent on a balance between light and dark. Should a purple dragon fall prey to their own anger and hatred, they risk being consumed by dark ether, or nether, transforming into a blackened, rage-filled form. Spyro's a really nice guy, but as Dark Spyro, he lets loose. He's stronger, faster, and way more violent. Unfortunately, when Spyro's consumed by dark ether, he cannot return to his old self on his own. But with friends like Sparks and Cinder at his side, he's always found his way back. Through the power of love, Red Spyro, you gotta believe. <laughs> what the? Is he with all these powers at his claw tips, Spyro <laughs> is a force to be reckoned with. He's pretty quick, outracing biplanes that can fly over 159 miles per hour. He's pushed a gold That's statue about twice his size, and he's pretty tough, claiming his scales are guys. impenetrable. So pretty so I'm electricity proof <laughs> too? I knew my scales were impenetrable, but now this? 
a bold claim, but let's look at the facts. Spyro once took a punch from this massive magma golem, which then lost its arm and replaced it with a cathedral tower. This cathedral is very similar in size to St. Stephen's Basilica, a Roman Catholic church in Budapest, Hungary. By taking the height, length, and depth of the basilica and adjusting for empty space, we can estimate the arm's mass to weigh over 400,000 tons. Assuming a low-end punching speed of 15 miles per hour, that of the average humans, the golem must have hit with at least 1.9 million tons of force. Oh and after God. getting all the <laughs> power, saving the dragons, and defeating the Dark Master himself, Spyro tapped into Ether one last time to literally pull the exploding planet back together. How is this a fair math? I don't How know. The hell? How? Hmm, I'd say a mix of the power of love, <laughs> magic of friendship, like a and god. a smidgen of prophetic destiny. Yeah. Wiz, I want a pet dragon more than anything. <laughs> Everyone wants a pet dragon. Right? Another noble warrior yeah, falls just, victim to the plague sure of love. I would keep look so away. So he doesn't hurt you. I don't know. All right, what do you guys say? Are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. I wonder who first, a bandicoot or a dragon that pulls the planet is right unpredictable. Hmm. So what are you gonna do here? Oh my god. Okay, so they technically—I'm gonna vote for Spyro. They made it like, yeah. Same. I like. I don't play that much Crash Bandicoot. I'm gonna go for Spyro. Yeah, it's like. He, did so much that like he can yeah. fly faster. It seems he's stronger and more durable. He, he has, has all these power. powers. Yeah, he has these powers that can apparently like rip people apart and put back a planet. Jeez. Yeah, Spyro. Yeah, so I'm Spyro. I'm Spyro. I'm, I'm Spyro. I'm Spyro. Also, this isn't like it's way too crazy. Yeah. But if we lose, are you what? gonna accept it? <laughs> Don't get salty, okay, guys. It's, I'm gonna see, it depends if they give a good example as to why he would lose. It's probably gonna be some like BS, like, I don't know. Like, I he's durable, it doesn't matter what you're gonna do to Crash. Yeah. Okay, so, let's get into this. Yeah, whatever. I'm kinda scared though. Dude. Crash, you the boss. <laughs> Break those bosses, Crash. Oh, <laughs> why? Weird. Uh, what are you doing? Yeah, don't I'm not. They just, it's just the, the fact that they, they like, say that he has it. It's kind of. What the? Oh yeah. Hey. Oh shoot. <laughs> he Sparks! killed his brother. No! He killed Sparks right away. I love the three D ones. The two D ones are never. Oh, that's great for me. Never, get, never like so hype. Yeah. This is more immerse. Really great. See? Look at him! He's smacking the. Okay. <sighs> Alright. <laughs> like, they do some <laughs> cool stuff with the 2D ones, but you it. it's usually just like. kind of seems like a video game sprite. <laughs> oh, yeah, this what? mask could be a. It gets. getting out. Is anyone's game this time? Oh, yeah. it wasn't wasn't Spiral a boss battle in that like what in that uh those Game Boy games like Crash was also a boss battle. Yeah, if you got you, those two, there's orange, there's Crash Purple, mm -hmm. and uh like Spiral, Spiral orange. orange. And if you got what? different ones, there would be uh no! the boss at the end. He has weapons! Yeah, he well, had the mech in from the Yeah, they said they, and then like the bazooka and all that. Which honestly I think it's fair. Well, if I think it's a fair battle, give him weapons when Spyro's completely like a god dragon apparently. Damn, that's nice. Hmm. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, crash. Oh, hey, oh, the ram right into him. Oh, earth magic. Oh. Hey. You're ramming someone with a giant ball, and you're putting. Then you have to put spikes on it. Uh, yeah, that was from the Game Boy game. Yeah. Where do you keep finding these things? Damn, he's getting smacked, man. You could lose. I don't think you can. Yeah. I have faith in Spyro. Oh, like, I'm done with this. Oh no. 
was kind of bad, but... What? Now kill him! Oh no, he has something else, guys! No uh. way they can BS this! What's he? What? Oh, yeah, I knew it's probably the other one. Nah, it's fine, yeah. Nobody messes with me, pal. Yeah. Hey, hey, that was I don't completely think right. I chose Spyro. I want to see why this. Spyro had plenty of obvious advantages. His speedy flight let him control the pace of the battle, and his elemental arsenal gave him a much wider variety of attacks than Crash had ever seen in a one-on-one -on -one fight. Even with his extraordinary puzzle-solving skills, Crash was simply overwhelmed. But surprisingly, this wasn't nearly as one-sided as it looked on paper. With the strength to throw an eight-ton boulder, Crash was actually stronger than Spyro, and both of them had survived impacts worth around two million tons of force. It makes sense why they took those. It's almost like they planned this all along. To be fair, we did have to lowball Spyro's durability against the Golem's punch. However, both of them had shown durability, which far exceeded much of their attack capability. So even with his gadgets, Crash really didn't have a good way to hurt Spyro very much. But the funny thing is, Spyro didn't have many attacks that could firmly hurt Crash either. They were both just too tough. Well, until Spyro used the Ether Breath, which could literally break matter apart at an atomic level. Not even Aku Aku could save Crash from a beam that intense. I guess Crash just Jeez. couldn't spin this one. The winner is Spyro the Dragon. It does, seem, it does seem a lot hey more Hey guys, thanks for watching this episode of Death Battle. If you want to get I, I saw one first, and they're, yeah. they're doing a Sora from and if Kingdom Hearts. And I wanted to see who was going to fight, because... Yeah. I was like, who's going to fight Sora? Yeah, Sora. Icarus! 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 Hey, that sounds like a cool I never fight. played Kid or Chris games. I really wanted to play yeah. uh, Uprising. Apparently that game has a multiplayer that's probably a bit better than Splatoon. No even. way. Apparently. I love Splatoon. <laughs> yes, it's like apparently Splatoon that, too. Like Kid Icarus Uprising has a multiplayer that's the better fun? than that. Like, that's for the 3DS, right? Uprising? Yeah. No, I think that was for the game. Not game too. I think it's. Uh, I think it was. Yeah. They should get one for the Switch. No, yeah, the then, I don't think they came up with. I don't think a Kid Icarus game had And then I've never played Kingdom Hearts game. I know the fourth one is supposed to be coming out. So like I've heard a lot this of year. story from them. It's and stuff. It just sounds super. And things is just I. I've never retained knowledge because I haven't watched it cohesively. Staffy mm -hmm. Doug. <laughs> It's not that, it's Donald. Donald, Donald. Donald. not that. Oh, yeah, that's his Looney Tunes. That's why I was laughing. <laughs> yeah, but, but like, so, but I know, like, I know how strong people in Kingdom Hearts can get. Like, I, I don't know, but like, Pit versus Gods, so maybe. Mm -hmm. But and it's also just the thing of like the story of Kingdom Hearts. Like I've heard, I've also heard a bit of it, but I've never. Retained it because of the fact of how confusing it seemed. Oh, yeah, it's they literally have to make in between games and just time to, travel just to make to yeah. sh make people understand oh, yeah. the story. Yeah, and like there's time travel, which always makes things just it's so big confusing and, like, and so biased. But like I'm that. a person that I I can, I'm a person that kind of can enjoy repetitive gameplay, like stuff like Destiny War, uh, Dynasty, Dynasty War. Warrior type games. So I've always kind of wanted to try Kingdom Hearts, you know, but I always feel like if I had to start Kingdom Hearts, I'd have to do the first one, yeah, which so doesn't seem fully like... fully understand the whole thing. Which right? people say the game isn't that great, gameplay-wise, in yeah. the first one, so it's like, uh, should I actually should play Should I it? or should I go? <laughs> like, then there's, because it'd be kind of, it's kind of... I mean, it would be kind of annoying to start at the first one, just to keep knowing how that is probably going to be better on the other one. Mm -hmm. And then I can just keep playing the other one. But then there's the story to get. I don't know. I might just read up on the story and maybe even buy yeah. the third and new one as my own. With all that said, okay, with all that said, I guess we're done with this one and I'm excited to see the next one. So if you like the video, don't forget to press the like button. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more from us and comment for any series you want us to react to or even just small videos too mm -hmm. and we'll get see you guys next time see ya, see ya.